Cat Williams, David Goggins, Donald Trump. Who are you interviewing for a million dollars worth of game? Who are you doing where's Wallow? And who are you saying no to? What's up, everybody? It's your coach. Welcome to the number one positivity podcast on the internet right now, the Coach HP Show. Yes. And today, I have the guy, Wallace Peebles from me, 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 Million Dollars Worth of Game. McKay Wallow 267, baby. Question for you, dude. When was the first time you hit that me, 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 me? When did you come up with that? I don't know. We were just recording one day, and I just said it. Like, me, 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 me. And I was like, Million Dollars Worth of Game. You know, it was like... It wasn't even thought about. I just was doing it. With you, man, you got to understand that I got to prep you with what I'm about to do because it has been four years since I've been waiting to do this with you. Uh-huh. So I have so many things that I want to get from you. But my number one objective with this is let people know that I think you're one of the most underestimated people around right now. Thank you. Not only your story, but your mindset and how you attack situations and how you present yourself is so undervalued, man, that I think you're a guy that deserves 20 million. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's just insane, dude. The fucking button. We're hitting the fucking button right now, just so you know. Question for you, dude. My first one is, you're a top flight guerrilla marketer. Yes. You've called yourself that. What makes you that? Uh, marketing to me is a feeling. It's, um, it's action. It's, it's being able to get a message across. So when I say marketing, I'm out here, I'm just, I'm doing my thing because I don't care. It's not about the money. It's not about, I need to put ads. It's about just getting out there and just doing it. And I think a lot of people are afraid of that. And it's the consistency that a lot of people is afraid to stay on. You know, people just say, oh yeah, I got this, I got this album out. I got this clothing line. And they be like, oh, let me hide. I'm going to keep, I'm going to put it in your face. I'm going to keep coming. So it's like, that's why I get out there and I get it out there. Whatever I've got going on, I'm going to get it to the world. Well, wow, that tenacity, where does that come from? Oh, you know, growing up in the ghetto, you know, you had to get up every day and go hard, you know? When I was in prison, I had to get up every day and go hard, you know? And I just think that uh, when, when, when you got that fire, and the fire is from pressure. It's from pressure of not, not knowing, you know, how you're going to pay your bills, not knowing how you're going to survive, you know, getting up in prison. Hey, they know when I'm trying to get out of jail, I got to work hard. So it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of pressure just coming from struggle. And uh, the struggle put a fire up under you quick. You mention a lot your grandma, right? But I never hear anything about your dad. How long was he around till? What well, effect did he have in your life? Until I was like two and then he disappeared. Like, you know what I mean? We don't know if he was murdered. We don't, you know what I mean? Like that type of disappearing. I know. So I never had that. You know, I had a stepfather, rest in peace to hip. He was around. Uh, most of my life, he was in prison, though, and to the point where me, it was still me in prison, so, you know, but, uh, like, it, it, it was it was no no real, like, consistent father figure in my life, you know? I'm the reverse. My dad was super around. That's major. But my dad prepared me for everything in life, Wallow, except to deal with him. He beat the shit out of me, like, consistently when I failed in sports and stuff like that, so it was a disaster, dude. But you turned out very different than everybody else, man. Talk to me about Shoes in jail. You said that he told you to live your life. Shoes was legend. You know, Shoes died in jail, man. And uh, I remember I was in that, um, the, 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 the prison hospital one, and he just like grabbed my arm. He was like, man, get out there and live, because I never lived. Do what you want to do. Um, that was very important, because I believe, like, especially now, everybody is out here living for the idea that they think somebody has with them. And they're not living for them, you know? It's like, oh, I gotta be this, I gotta be cool, I gotta be this, I gotta wear this, I gotta shop here, I gotta travel here. What the fuck you wanna do? Right. You know, I think everybody put their feelings, their thoughts, their desires, their dreams, their ideas to the back and uh, prioritize everybody else's that they, you know, ideas that they have for them. Something very interesting about you all is that you're incredibly funny. <laughs> like, like your sense of humor mm-hmm. comes like out of control, right? 
I think that's what has you on the top thing because you get fucking serious real quick, but you're funny as fuck too, dude. Yeah. That sense of humor, where does that come from? Um, growing up, I always looked at comedians, man. And then my uncle, rest in peace, my uncle Tommy, I used to be in his room back in the day. You remember the, like, the eight-track joints? Yeah. He used to, he used to play all the Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, and the albums and all. He used to play that stuff. And I used to love it, especially hearing him curse. As a kid, I'd be in his room, and he'd be playing them. I'd be cracking up. And it was like, I always was like that funny dude around the neighborhood. I always was crazy, you know. So I just think, like, it's just naturally in me. I don't be trying to do nothing. I just be, I don't know. I just be being me. Dude, you check. So I, I saw a ton of podcasts with you, right? The best podcast for you by far is when chicks interview you. You change completely. You're like, Mr. Suave, you really kick. I love it. Like, you smile. You're like yeah. in the room, right? Let's talk love for a second, dude. Last time we spoke, you were in a relationship. You talked about, you've talked about this publicly, that you went through some uh, miscarriages. And stuff, and it was a real tough point, right? Now you're extremely successful. You're probably better looking than you were before. <laughs> you're mature. You have all this stuff, right? We're the same age. I've been married for nine years. I got lucky. I married my high school sweetheart oh, after. You know what I'm saying? She's a 10 and she's the best. I got two kids, with, right? But you now are in a position where you're dealing with social media now, women. You're dealing with a lot of stuff. You're a very popular guy. What are you thinking about, man? What's your, what's your thing with this? How are you thinking? Because I would love to see Wallow raise men. Like you with two boys, three boys would be insane. Be Talk to me. Um, you know, it's extremely hard. And once you get to the point of just assessing being popular, you don't know why people come. You don't know why they're there. And, and it's, it takes a lot to try to figure that shit out. You know, you know, we all had that moment when we, when we trying to figure out our dreams and we, we don't have anything. You think, I'm going to do this. It's going to be easy for me. It's extremely hard to find a good woman once you get in the position because you don't know who angling, who's trying to get this and get that. So it just be like, man. What strategies are you using? Like, what have you learned? Do you want to share? You know, it's not really about strategies. I believe... When that person comes, they just gonna come. It ain't gonna be about material. Because now it's about what can you do rather who do who are you? Got it. Yeah. It's sad. It's just sad. It's sad, you know, and sometimes you just be like, damn, you know. I believe everybody one day person that they could just fall back on, they could fall back on them, they trust them, they believe in them. So I, know, I just think it's a moment, you know. I think it's gonna happen when it's meant to. Dude, I wanted to be single forever. I never wanna settle down, nothing but my chick just was the one three. You tell me which of these three, because you love doing this. Cat Williams, David Goggins, Donald Trump. Who are you interviewing for a million dollars worth of game? Who are you doing where's Wallow? And who are you saying no to? I'm interviewing for Where's Wild Though. You know what's you know what's so crazy? It's like Like Cat, you know what's so crazy about Cat? Cat it seemed like Cat didn't got his shit off already. You know? So million dollars every game, Donald Trump, and I'm gonna tell you why. Me and Gil gonna roast him. That'd be insane. We gonna, it's That'd gonna be, be crazy because he's gonna say a bunch of slick shit. Yeah. We're gonna roast him. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's gonna be funny. It'll be real funny. It'll be just like, but Cat, Cat did his, you know, Cat did his thing. Yeah. I think, um, I think he got off so hard. Big two interviews. Willie D interview also. It's like, I don't, I don't even think Cat would do too many more interviews. Right, right, right. I don't think we're gonna see him, yeah. see him no more. I think he did, he did, he did his thing so much. Uh, like it or love it, whatever yeah. your thing is. I think he did his thing so much, but like, that'd be funny as shit. Plus, the, you know, as president, there we huge, just, huge. You think I'm funny now? <laughs> oh my god, the hair episode, the episode you guys put the fake hair. That was amazing. Talk to me about hair loss, dude. We both rocking the same haircut you know, here. It was crazy. How hard was it? To, it was hard because I was in prison, and I went through, and I went through a phase when I realized, oh shit, my shit ain't coming in no more. Cause it was always coming in, but when it started going out, I was a little insecure about that. How old? I think I was like 27, man. 
I was like, oh shit, it started getting light. I said, oh man. It was it was a little point because you like nobody want to lose their hair. Right, they, right. Nobody want to you know uh, father time. Nobody want to respect them because you think like it pulls it happen at a certain age. I can't, I can't <laughs> believe this shit. Right. Oh man, you know it was like so you know it was just something I had to deal with though. You don't rock the mustache anymore. No facial hair. No, no you didn't even try it, huh? No, not since I was you know back at like nineteen ninety eight. Was the last time. You don't miss it at all, nothing. Don't face your hair. No, no you ain't gonna try it, huh? I love the butt naked. I love yeah. it. You know what I mean? Easy for me. When do you think you're gonna write the book of life? When are you gonna release that? Because that's coming. I know it's I got coming. a book coming out this year, Simon and Schuster. So, you know, so they ready. They ready to be that. Are you gonna release your book of life? Have you ever thought about that? Somebody told me, but I'm like, it's hard. It's private, you know. You Super know. personal, huh? Yeah, you know that to to yourself. You, I want to give a special shout out, man, to two women that have, I would not know of you if it wasn't for, number one, for my girl, Erica, you know, mm-hmm. she, uh, I was doing research to, to go on her show and I ran across your episode and I wanted to thank you because I'll never forget this, like I took a screenshot of it. you, we had a conversation and you, this meant the world to me, dude, you texted her, good morning, E-Money, Coach HP's fucking amazing, he's coming to Barstool, question, you remember that? You yeah. sent me that, man. But I really appreciate you doing that for me in like, a, in like a three second thing. That's huge. And then the second one is my girl Shay M. Loss. Yeah, that's my people. The best, dude. Just... She's the best, man. So those two people are, are amazing. You introduced me to Sampa. Greatest in the world. What about his music? What did you like about that? It was just like, it was, it was a feeling of it. It was a crazy feeling. It was like, it just every time I listen to it, it's like I'm listening to it for the first time. Plastic, can't get close. Uh, piano. No I've just heard plastic. I just get plastic over and over again. Plastic, so that's, that's my favorite. I know that's the one that, that I've been playing. So that's real cool. Yeah, he just, he just, then when you meet him, he's a great person. You can tell. Yeah, you can tell. Mm-hmm. And the other person you introduced me to now, what I was doing research is that touchdown dude, mm-hmm. with that song. Tiso touchdown. touchdown. Whoa, with that song. But he doesn't even look like he sings that way. I was like, what the fuck is this? What a huge find. You're always surfing on YouTube. What are you looking for? YouTube is my playground. I love YouTube because it's like, it's so informative, but like, I can go check out a how-to video and then I can go in there. What are you how toing? Like, what, 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 is, what are you how to? Like, it might be how to, how to set up your Shopify, how to start a, you know, a, 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 a clothing brand, how to make a car, all types of stuff. And dudes, you know them dudes that be making a, a that be in the woods and they be making them houses from the dirt and all that. I like that. And this other guy I was watching one time. He be on there like cutting, like cooking. He be cutting like cows and all that, trimming them and then cooking them and putting the, cutting all the vegetables. You like that? I like that and I don't even eat meat. I just like watching all types of Dude, stuff. you used to post houses all the time. Yeah, you don't black, do that anymore. Oh yeah, black. Cause you bought one or just no, is it? No, I got some in the works right now. Yeah. But I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to get back to that. That's my thing. Like, you, you know me, I, I, uh, it'd be like houses, cars, music, uh-huh. you know, I'm getting back to a lot of that stuff, so it's just going down, you know what I mean, it's like, I'm gonna get back to a lot of stuff. When you do Million Dollars Worth of Game and you started with the music, whose idea was to do that? Oh, uh, it was me and Gills, like we always... Huge icebreaker, huge, it just, I watch just ease everybody, like once the music hits, everybody just yeah. chills out, I think that's huge. You mentioned cars. You were one of the first dudes to pop off using a Prius, which nobody it. does that. Love that it. red Prius, right? So much, I get her laugh, so much street cred goes to you for that because we're both minorities. We both have that thing that we're Latin, we pop off the machismo, hey, whatever. Everything the reverse. You said, fuck it, here's my Prius. I love it. I just washed it. I'll never forget that. And I love it when you sell merch out of it. You're like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. how important is that to you, bro? Oh, uh, it's important. It's really important. Because it's like, you know, you just got to be, you just can't care. In order to win, you can't care. I think people care too much. And when you care a lot, you lose a lot. Mm-hmm. Because you can't, you can't be you. It's hard, man. 
hard as shit to be you when you care too much, you know? How, where's Wallow a super, super undervalued show, bro? Well, you, the value you bring there is insane. You interview whoever with a camera like this. You don't give a fuck. You just go, right? How do you pick your guests for that? Do you reach out to them? Do people reach out yeah, to I you? I always reach out to people. Be like, yo, what's up? You know? And uh, that's how that happens. You know? That's how they're reaching out and connecting with people. What's the future of you, bro? What, what, do, you, what do you want that hasn't happened yet? That you're thinking, that, you, that you're craving? I think more than anything, uh, I just want genuine people in my life. You know, uh, the car, you know, when I was, when I had an idea of, when I was in prison, I used to dream about having a car, having material things. And then I got them and it was like, I attract fake people. That's the thing. No, I got I got the material things, got all this stuff, got the money. And it was like that shit didn't even matter. You know, I still sleep the same when I go to sleep. So it'd be like, and and when you get it, it'd be like, you you think that having all these things, something going to change is going. And I was disappointed because I thought it was going to be a different yeah. feeling or a different change. Yeah. And it was like, I still sleep the same. I still, yeah. you know. Yeah. You your uh, my boy one time reached out to me and said. Dude, you remind me, talking about me, about Anthony Bourdain, you should read about him. I had no idea who he was. Oh so I, I saw Kitchen Confidential, right? And he exposed pretty much the whole industry. That's your guy. You've done the same coincidentally. I don't know if you, how that happened, but you've done the same with yourself and with people and the culture of what you're seeing. Always, no matter what, if somebody backed you up or didn't, like you're always you, man. How important is that to you? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's very important because you go through this stuff, man, and you just, I just want to be me and I just want to help people. And I want the help that I wanted when I was in prison. You know, everybody think of, people only think about help when they need that shit, you know? So it was like, with me, it was like, uh, I wanted it and, that, and, it, and it happened, you know? I just, so I said, I'm going to give it and that's what I do. Dude, I love that, man. Wallow, I can't thank you enough, dude, for taking the time, for coming. See, you don't know how important this is to me, like, like for real. Uh, before I let you, I always ask my guests, man, question for me. What makes you happy? This. I prepared three weeks for this. I, that, I <laughs> dove into your life, mm -hmm. and, and I saw interviews, and I got to know you. It's almost like I know you already. I'm obsessed with this process, mm -hmm. and how I think is, because you don't remember the first phone call we had, you in the ranking of people... You're here, right? And success-wise, I'm here, right? But immediately I have something in me that goes, I got to help Wallow. I don't know why, but I got to help Wallow. I got to help Wallow. And I go, man, well, you told me you love David Goggins. I go, this guy, this guy. I got three more guys that I'm thinking about, right? That I thought about right now. I go, when I sit with them, after I'm done, I'm going to tell them, this connection, this plug, this plug, this is the next yeah. move, you know? That's what makes me happy. So I never think about myself. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with helping others. I appreciate you. Coach. Even those people that don't need me, or, or you might not even see it, no, everybody need everybody in order for this world to work. It's weird what we do. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. I know you got to get out of here. He's everywhere. He's the man. Man's doing a lot of stuff, okay? Where's Wallow? I'm going to tag everything there. Big shout out to the Logan Hotel for showing this guy some love. This guy's Philly's finest, man. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>